You are welcome to today's video lesson on Chemistry Made Easy with Bright Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be discussing about the introduction to chemistry, where we'll be learning what chemistry is all about. Now, this must be noted. Now, it must be noted that chemistry is simply the study of the composition properties, uses, and structure of matter. So it means that chemistry has to do with the study of the composition. C here means composition. P here means properties. U here means uses. And S here means structure of matter. So this must be noted about chemistry. Now you can see we said now that chemistry has to do with the study of the composition, properties uses, and structure of matter. So the question we're going to ask ourselves, what do we call matter? What do we call matter? Now matter basically is anything that has mass, Okay, this word must be noted. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Or we can as well say matter is anything that has density. This must be noted. Matter is anything that has density. So why did I say matter is anything that has density? Now recall from science, there is a formula that relates mass and volume. And what is that formula? It is simply density. Because density is solved by a formula which is mass over volume. Now why am I saying this? Now you can see here that I said matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. You know, in chemistry, the word we are to use is substance. So, for instance, a particular substance like this now. This is a substance. And this is the palm of my hand. So, I said, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So, this is the substance. And this substance is occupying this space of my palm. Okay? And this space of the palm this matter is occupying is what we call volume. So, this space is what we call volume. So, you can see this substance is occupying this space in my hand. Okay? So, the space this substance is occupying basically is called volume. That is why we can as well say matter is anything that has what? Density. Because this substance now is the matter. Okay? But to be specific, this substance is a solid matter. Because matter is anything that has mass. This water now basically has a mass. And it is occupying this space in my hand. So we call this matter. But to be specific, this is a solid matter. So let us proceed to the states of matter. Because matter basically exists in various states. And these states of matter, there are of two types basically. We have the major state of matter. And also we have the minor state of matter. We have the major state and the minor state of matter. So what are the major state of matter? There are three majorly and the first is called solid. So solid is a major state of matter. The next is called liquid. So liquid is a major state of matter and lastly we have gases. So gas basically is a major state of matter. So what are the minor states of matter? There are four, basically. And the first is called plasma. Plasma is a minor state of matter. This plasma here is not the plasma that is found in the blood. This plasma is basically one of the minor states of matter. It's different from, from that. Now, the next minor state of matter we'll be discussing is what we call the boss. Einstein condensate. This is another state of matter, the Bose-Einstein condensate. 
Well, for the next, we have the Femi Ionic Condensate. The Femi Ionic Condensate is another state of matter, but to be precise, a minor state of matter. And lastly, the last minor state of matter is what we call quarks, gluon condensate. Quarks, gluon condensate. So all these are the major and minor states of matter. So in the course of this video lesson, I'll be focusing on the major states of matter. Now let us focus on the major states of matter. And you can see them on the board. Solid, liquid, and gas. To differentiate between these major states of matter, it will be in three aspects. So the first aspect to differentiate between these three states of matter will be based on the force of attraction that exists between these states. Based on the force of attraction that exists between the states of matter. So, talking about solid, which is the first major state of matter, it must be noted that solids have a very strong force of attraction. Solids have a very strong force of attraction. A very strong force of attraction. Now, moving over to the next, which is liquid. It must be noted that liquid have moderate force of attraction. So, the particles that host liquid is not too strong. So, it is moderate. So, here, liquids have moderate force of attraction. Well, for gases, gases have... A very weak force of attraction. A very weak force of attraction. So all this must be noted on the state of matter when differentiated based on their force of attraction. Now moving over to the next factor to differentiate between these states of matter. And it will be on based on their shapes and volume this must be noted so to differentiate between these three major state of matter it will be on based on their shape and volume now talking about solid it must be noted that solids have a definite shape definite shape and volume Okay, they have definite shape and volume. Now, for example, this is a solid substance. And this shape of this substance is definite. You can see here that this, this substance shape cannot change. Okay, so it is definite. And this substance now, when laid in my palm, is basically occupying a space. And this space is occupying, as Elia said, is called volume. So we can as well say that solids, they have definite shape and volume. Okay, so this is something we must take note on solid particles or solid substances. Now, moving over to liquid. Okay, now it must be noted that liquids have no definite shape but have definite volume. Okay, liquid basically don't have definite shape but they, are, they have definite volume so this must be noted about liquids now moving over to gases now it must be noted that gases have no definite shape and volume no definite shape and volume so this must be noted about differentiating solids liquid and gases based on this factor now for the last for the last to differentiate between solid, liquid, and gas, it will be based on their motion. This must be noted. It will be based on the type of motion this uh, 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 states undergoes. So, for the first, which is solid, which type of motion is exhibited by a solid particle? It is basically called vibrational motion. 
vibrational motion. So solid particle vibrate at a fixed point. This is a solid particle. So it vibrates as at a fixed point. Okay? Now moving over to the next, which is liquids. Now it must be noted that liquids undergoes translational motion. Liquid undergoes translational motion. Now what am I trying to say? Now for example, you can see this water inside this container. So when I change the position of this container, you can see it lying in, a, in an horizontal direction. So when this liquid goes to this side, you can see that liquid inside this container is translating to another phase or translating to another direction. So it means that liquids undergo translational motion. You can see the liquid here is translating, undergoes translational motion. So this must be noted about liquid. Now, lastly, for gases, gases undergoes random motion. Gases undergoes random motion. If we don't say random motion, we can as well say zigzag motion. Or if we don't say that, we can as well say uh, or brownier motion. Now, this is a, a perfume container. Now, you can see this perfume container and there is a gas inside this container. So, when I spray this con uh, uh, gas from this container, you can see that the gas basically is moving in a random direction. Okay? So, gas is basically undergoes random motion, whereby liquids undergoes translational motion and solids undergoes vibrational motion. They vibrate at a fixed point. Now, this must be noted. It must be noted that liquids takes the shape of their container. Liquids take the shape of their container. That's why they don't have a definite shape. They basically take the shape of their container. Their shape is not fixed. Now you can see this water inside this cylindrical container is taking the shape of this container. Now let's take another example using this uh, container and this is a jug containing water. So when I pour this water into this container, you can see that the water inside this container is taking the shape of this container. So the point here is this, liquids only takes the shape of the container they are being filled in. They don't have a fixed shape. Okay, so with this, the differences between the states of matter have been explained. So if you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and share these videos with your friends. Thank you very much and God bless you.